Okay, so that's what we're going to be creating today. And before we get started, I want to just uh, explain what the project is all about. Let's uh, back out of this real quick so we can go and see this in two views. So I'm just going to scrub through this. I want you to look on the right side first, and I want you to notice how we are flying through this design. You see these layers appear as we fly the camera back. We could certainly fly forward as well. And I want you to just notice how much more dynamic this is than just using scale. We're not using scale here, we're in 3D. And if you look on the left side, here's the camera. You can watch the camera move through the scene. Okay, It's flying through in 3D space. And these are the various different layers. They're all laid out in depth in, in 3D space. First thing I want you to do, start a new project. File, new project. We're going to import your file. File import is one way to do it, uh, but I like to just double click in here. Right now we want 3D landscape AI. Don't import any of these others yet. And you'll have a dialog that pops up. We want for this one to choose composition. This makes sure that your Illustrator file is going to come in with layers intact. Now I want you to open 3D landscape. Double click. All the layers except for one are turned off here. That's my mistake. Let's go ahead and turn them all on. I want you to just click on the visibility and just drag the mouse down and all of those layers will show up. So here's the finished product. Here's what it looks like. But it's not in the right aspect. It's too square for us. So we're going to go to composition, composition settings, and as always, we're going to change this to HDTV 1080 29.97. I want you to make this six seconds long. Six seconds. My last project was only four seconds, and so by default, when I create a new project, it's going to make it that length. So I need to select all of these doggone layers. Here, let me drag this up a little bit so we can see them all. Select them all. Grab the very edge, if this happens to you, the very edge of the clip, and drag them out until they reach the end of the timeline. If you can't see the end of the timeline, here's your little slider down here that you can adjust. Now, as we do for all of our Illustrator files, we're going to turn on continuous rasterization for all of the layers. And by the way, if you can't see the switches, these are called the switches, if you can't see them, there's a little icon down here in the lower left, and it's the first icon. That one will reveal all of the switches to you. Now, next we're looking for the 3D switch. It looks like a little cube here. And we're going to turn on 3D for all except the bottom two layers, clouds and sky. Okay. Now let's deselect Command Shift A or Control Shift A if you're on a PC, which I am. Now let's add a camera. Layer, New, Camera. I want you to make the camera a two node camera and the preset should be set to 50 millimeters. This is what's known as a normal camera. We'll click OK. And the camera should be at the top of your layer stack. If it's not, drag it to the top of the stack. Now as you saw in the intro, we had two views here. We're going to set this up now. Over in the composition panel, the comp panel, uh, the very right, lower right side, click on where it says one view, set it to two views. Okay. Now click anywhere on the right side and choose active camera. There it is. Now click on the left side, anywhere on the left side. 
you're looking for these little blue little corners. That's what tells you that that particular view is selected. And we're going to go and choose Custom View 1. That's the second drop down from the right. And I'm interrupting the show to make a change here. I found when I was editing this, I want to make sure you set this dialog. This is the render engine. Uh, I want you to set this to classic 3D. Cinema 4D is fantastic. It provides a lot of really cool functionality, such as 3D extrusion and other things, but uh, it also increases render times dramatically. So make sure for this project, you set this to classic 3D. Now I'm gonna go back to this side and I want to just roll the mouse back a little bit and you can see this bounding box around the edges. This is the actual size of the file that you brought in. It's too big for what we have here. So we need to shrink all of this stuff down so it just fills up the comp. So I want you to choose all of your layers, not the camera, but all the other layers. Choose one, forest one, let's say, and go to the bottom, hold shift, click on the other one to select them all, and press S for scale. We're going to set scale to 68%, 68%. Now we could do this here. We could just reach up here and drag until it comes down and it just fills with no black space. I need to hold shift for this, by the way, hold shift. And there we see it is 67.6. Let's make that a round number. Let's make it 68, okay? The idea here in your own projects is to make sure it fills the space, it doesn't show any black around the edges. And again, you can see it's too big at the top and the bottom, that's fine. Too big is great. Too little is a problem. Okay, let's come over here now and press the U key to twirl everything up. And let's deselect, Control Shift A to deselect or Command Shift A. Now I want you to click on the MT3 layer. It's the third layer up from the bottom. We have sky and clouds. Here's MT3. That's our first 3D layer. I want you to type the P key to show position and then I want you to hold the Shift key and type S so that we also see the scale. Now we're going to start arranging these layers in terms of their depth. Now MT3 is the very back layer. That's the one that's the furthest off in the distance. So we are going to push this layer way back into the distance. So I want you to hold the shift key and the third number here, this is depth. Now let me explain this very quickly. Previously, all we had was two dimensions to work with, X and Y. X is the horizontal dimension. Y is the vertical dimension. And now we have Z, which is the depth dimension. Okay, so here's Z. This is what we're going to adjust. I want you to hold shift and start dragging to the right and we'll see that layer just push off into the distance. And we want to go way off in the distance, okay? And I want you to do this manually for now because that's the way you're gonna do it in your own project. But you'll see in the written instructions that the number we're looking for is 4,000. So once you push it off yourself, just go ahead and type in 4,000 so that we all get the same thing. Now we need to scale this layer up so that we compensate for the seemingly small size. It's not any smaller, it's just pushed way off into the distance. And so we're going to scale up. Again, I want you to drag the scale setting, any one of these numbers, they're all tied together, so no problem there. And what we're looking for is for this just to get to the boundary of all these other layers. Again, it needs to fill the screen without showing any edges around the sides. For me, the right number is 170. So 
we're just going to type in 170 and that fits real snugly around the borders of this comp without showing any edges around the layer itself. Okay, we're done with this layer. We're going to twirl it up. And now let's go to MT2. We're going to type P, hold Shift, type S. And we're going to start to push this layer back in the background. We're looking for a Z position around 3000, but for now I want you to just hold Shift and start to push it back into the background just so that you get a sense of what's going on here. Okay, and the number we're actually looking for is 3000. You can go ahead and click on it and type that in once you actually play with this uh, idea of working with the depth dimension. And again, we'll use the scale to compensate for the size here. So we'll scale it up until the bounding box just comes to the same area as all the other layers. For me, that number is 144. We'll twirl up MT2, go to MT1, and we're going to type P, hold Shift, type S, and we're just going to continue this process until we have all of these layers arranged in 3D space. Now, we're not going to adjust the tower layer at all, but these layers actually are going to be in front of the tower. So instead of pushing Forest 1, 2, and 3 back in space, we're actually going to pull them towards the camera. So go ahead and follow the written instructions to continue this process until you have all of these layers arranged in 3D space. Okay, you should have all of your layers now arranged in depth and scaled. And notice in your instructions that we have a description of some of the basic camera moves that we can do. Dolly, zoom, truck, pan, pedestal, and tilt. Let's see what the X position does to the camera. Now this is called a truck move. The camera is moving to the left and to the right. Let me move this over a little bit so you can see the camera as it moves. Now you notice that as the camera trucks, there's a point right here that it's looking at. This is called the point of interest. The camera is always going to fixate on this spot unless we tell it otherwise. Now let's see what the Y position does. This is a pedestal move. We are physically moving the camera up and down, but it's still fixated on that point in space we call the point of interest. I'm going to undo to set it back to normal. And now we have the Z position. This is a dolly move. This is where we physically push the camera in towards the subject or away. I'll undo that. And now let's go to the rotation settings. Let's try X rotation. See what that is. Okay, this is a tilt move. The camera is tilting up and down on its own axis. Let's try Y rotation. This is a pan move. You're going to pan the camera left and right. And finally Z. This is something unusual. You may hear this described as a Dutch camera or a Dutch angle. Uh, we are physically rotating the camera so it's not balanced on the horizon. So that's our basic camera moves. Again, we are only worried today about our position, dolly truck and pedestal. So let's move to four seconds in the timeline. You can drag the playhead or you can type four zero zero over here to jump to the four second mark and for position I want you to set a keyframe. Now I want you to go to the beginning of the timeline. I'm going to show you something real quick uh, and then we're going to make a change. We are going to push the camera into the distance roughly in this area over here and so I'm going to start to push the camera in. I don't want you to do it yet. I want you to watch me. Okay. As I push the camera in, notice we're coming closer and closer and closer to the point of interest. 
and suddenly as we cross over the depth plane of the point of interest, well, the camera flips around. It continues to fixate on that point. It wants to look at that point. So we have to tell our camera to ignore the point of interest. I'm going to undo that, Control Command Z, and I want you to click on Layer, Transform, Auto Orient. And we're going to set Auto Orient to Off. And notice how over here we're going to see the point of interest disappear altogether. There is no more point of interest. Now the camera is not fixating on a single point. Now let's adjust this. We're going to start to push the camera in and you see the numbers in your instructions but I'm going to hold shift and just push the camera in and we can see what happens. It's just crossing over these various planes of depth. So let's go ahead and put our actual numbers in. That is 1630, 660, and 4370. You might remember that our mountain that's the farthest away was set to 4000. So we're actually moving past the thing in the timeline that's the farthest away. And we'll see that we are just off in the distance here. All we can see now is the two layers that are not even in 3D space. Now we're almost through with our camera movement. We just have to make a couple of little adjustments. I want you to click over in the left view and I want you to switch it from custom view one to left. Just drag the camera over a little bit so that I can see it. And I want you to move to the four second point in the timeline and select the keyframe. And I want you to look for, a, you can see all these little dots. I want you to try to find the big dot right here. And we're going to tilt the camera down a little bit. The idea here is we're going to try to create a movement where the camera just flies over the treetops. So I'm going to pull this out a little bit and kind of down like so. Now let's go ahead and select both keyframes and easy ease them. Keyframe assistant, easy ease, just like you've been doing all semester. And let's preview this motion now. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so we're just right over the mountaintops here. And hopefully we're going to just skirt the tops of the trees here. Oh, that's kind of, that's too much, right? Now we're actually in the trees. So I'm going to adjust this motion path a little bit so that it's not too much, still too much. Yeah, too much. So we can just make an adjustment to this motion path until we get something that's not quite so crazy. There we go. There's another one that's a little too tall for us. So just making little minute adjustments here until we're just flying across the treetops. Okay, looks pretty good. Now we're going to go to the graph editor. That's the last little icon over here above the timeline. And I want you to click on the graph editor and make sure this little second icon from the left, make sure it's set to edit speed graph. I hope by now you've been experimenting with the speed graph. I want you to click on this little dot on the right, right here. And what that will show you is a representation of the speed that's automatically set up when we use Easy Ease. And so what I want you to do is grab the little handle here and pull it all the way out to the left. And you should end up with a curve like this. So it's going to ramp up to speed very fast and then slow to a stop. Let's see how that looks. So see I've still got one, one tree that's kind of in the way here. Still need to make a little adjustment to my motion track here. Let's 
going to push this guy in a little, maybe up a little. It's okay to see a piece of that. We just don't want the whole thing. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and collapse the camera layer now and turn off the graph editor. We don't need to see any of that anymore. And I want you to go up to File, Import, and let's bring in the REI logo, REI.AI. We'll import that. And this time, we want to collapse all of the layers in this file, in this Illustrator file. So be careful about this, which one of these you use. We want only a single layer this time. So we're going to click on Footage and click OK. Now let's drag the REI layer just below the camera. And let's type P, hold shift, type S, and we, got to, we need to, to uh, tick the 3D switch for this layer. Okay, so we're going to set the Z position to 2500 and the Y position to 470. So it's set off in the distance and set up just a little bit high. And let's set the scale to 200%. And it's a little hard to tell right now, but it's fuzzy, okay? So in order to solve that problem, whenever we scale things up, we need to make sure that we turn on continuous rasterization. So I'm going to click over here on the left side. I want to go back to the custom view one view. And let's see where that logo is in Z space. I'm going to hold down the space bar and pull this over so we can see it. So you can see here that the REI logo is set way back in the mountain area. So it's going to be past the tower, past the first couple of sets of mountains, and it's pushed, pushed way back there. So we can see again as we scrub the timeline where this comes in. First set of mountains, second set of mountains, then the REI logo, more mountains, the tower, everything's looking good. Well, we'll twirl up our EI and let's go down to the clouds layer and we'll give the clouds just a little bit of motion as if the wind is blowing them from the left to the right. So let's go to the beginning of the timeline, set a keyframe for position, and we'll set it to 785x, and then let's go to the end of the timeline. And again, we'll set X to 1010. And we're done. Let's look at the timeline, see how it looks. Got a little motion with the clouds in the background. And that's it. I hope this helps you to get started. Now you're going to do the same thing with your own 3D landscape file or whatever you choose. So good luck and have fun. Let me know if you have any questions.